Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube? Playing some Gilgamesh today, or should I say the best warrior in Duel? OMG, is this clickbait? No, it's not clickbait. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, evening, night, morning, whatever it is for you guys. And no, it's not clickbait. Uh, first be first things first, I want to say, um, actually, let me buy my items before I start yapping too much. Before I get too crazy with it, let me get some, let me get some thingamabobbers. Yeah, this looks fine. We're out of there. Anyways, uh, the only warrior that even comes close to Gilgamesh, by the way, and you could maybe even argue is better, but I'm not going to say they're better. And uh, it's not just for clickbait reasons. Gilgamesh is my favorite warrior in any game mode. I have a heavy bias towards... I have a heavy bias towards him. He's very, very, very good. He's very fun, very flexible, uh, tons of different ways to play him. He's not very predictable in general. Um, but the only warrior that even comes close is Osiris. Uh, there are certain matchups, I will say, where Osiris is better. But the main reason why I rank Gilga higher is because I prefer Gilga more and also because I think he's more versatile in general. Uh, he's also safer than Osiris. Not because he's more tanky, actually, because Osiris is way more tanky than Gilgamesh. It's actually not even close. But um, Gilgamesh is very forgiving because his, he has faster CC in his normal kit, you know, kicking them off versus the tether. Um, back up, Mr. Mr chocolate guy i think we're both just gonna go for clear here he's probably gonna out clear me a little bit because he's chalk but i do have the shard now the shard comes in clutch for auto attackers like gilgamesh and I'll, I'll go into more i'll talk more about you know why i think gilgamesh is good and whatnot right after this kind of don't want to be too distracted for this little fight we're about to have here very intense warrior 1v1 oh okay Okay, okay, okay. But we got all video to talk about why I think Gilgamesh is good and also why I think he's a little bit better than Osiris. And I'm not going to talk about any other warrior because it's not even close. Like, for example, I'm against the Chalk right now. I am not sweating this matchup whatsoever. Like, me wanting to focus up and fight him is more or less just so I don't drop a kill. Why did you teleport like that, my man? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna assume he did not mean to do that because why would he why would he do that? I don't know. This might actually be one of those like two-parter, three-parter videos because Gilgamesh goes kinda hard, man, and I just don't see how this chunk is gonna compete with me, you know? And I wanna so I'm gonna use this video probably as a way to explain why I think Gilgamesh is so good and why you guys should play him. Um, because he's actually very forgiving. It's not just like a top player thing, he's very forgiving. I could go grab my item thingy, but I don't think it's that deep. Because no matter what it is, I'm probably not going to sell it immediately. Because uh, I already the only reason I would do that is if I needed to uh, finish my transcendence, and I'm good. No worries, we already got the gold. Um, but I think he's very forgiving, not because he's tankier than Osiris, but because he has faster CC, and um, he has tons of HP five. Like he's not as tanky. But he has tons of HP 5, so if you make a mistake, it's no biggie. You kind of just heal it up. You get a lot of HP 5 as you level up the 1. But yeah, I don't want him to get that. Oh, he's not even on it. He was on the he's on the small camp. What the heck, man? <clears throat> and uh, also, even more importantly, I think, is uh, he has a jump. And Osiris ult is technically a jump. And it's actually a pretty low cooldown, let's be real, but it's still an ultimate, regardless of whether it's a low cooldown or not, it's still an ultimate. We got a bus play. I will not be building into this item, but I will keep it just for the prompts, because why not? It's pretty good, pretty good stats. Also, it's notable that this is only a 600 gold tier 1, which is a little bit on the low end. Eh, it's kind of average, but like, compare it to like um, tier 1 Pridwin or something, whatever that's called. I think it's called Gem of Fate. That's obviously going to give you more gold, right? We're going to wait for these Chesters to spawn. Hopefully they spawn in one of these two locations at three minutes here, as they usually do. And they did not, of course. So they're going to be spawning in the back. Which, actually, I'm going to use this time. I think I won't lose red pressure or anything if I do this. I think I'll be okay. I'm not really afraid of a Chalk. I'm actually kind of happy that we're starting this video off against the Chalk. Because even though, obviously, this guy may, not, may or may not be the best player in the world, you know. But still, there's a lot of Chalk fans out there, and I already know there's going to be one guy commenting, Dude, Chalk is the best warrior. He's so cool. No, he's not. Okay. Okay, you're right. He is cool, but he's not the best warrior. Um, I'm actually going to go auto-attack this game, which, I'll be honest, most of the time I go a little bit more bursty, like Serrated Edge Hydras. Potentially even a Deathbringer, maybe? That's that's the style I like with Gilgamesh, but again, warrior versus warrior, there's no reason to do that. 
I should just go straight up auto attack with my XC kins, etc. I think it's just better in a warrior v warrior game. It also kind of depends on which warrior though. Like if I was against an Osiris, I think he would do that a little bit better than me. So I'd probably just go the bursty build. In fact, I have done that recently against an Osiris. He's probably going to ult for this, I would imagine. That was actually pretty close. I won't lie, it was pretty close. Um, you know, Chalk, Chalk put in some work there, but one thing I will say is I have a Transcendence, whereas he has a Dominance. And of course, the Dominance is going to be better there, but I had a Horrific. I didn't use it till the end, though, so eh, whatever. But I, I never really thought we would lose that. I knew we had it in the bag from the beginning. Close or not, no worries. But you see what I mean, though? How, how safe I am? I just kick that guy into a wall, and I still have my jump up. Like, I didn't even have to jump away to get away from him kind of thing. Very, very safe character. Blop. Um, we're going to go ahead and get our Chalice online. Why not? You know what? I'll be honest. I don't think rushing green XE is good. I really don't. But he does have a shell, and he has healing, and I literally had 600 gold on the dot. So it's like, eh, you know? It's kind of like a why not situation. Um, not really like, a, I need this, like, I need the green XE now. It's more of just like, yeah, yeah, I could buy that. Why not? No big deal. No big, no big deal. Um, keep getting distracted, though. I don't, I don't know why, but I keep getting distracted. I mean, actually, I think, um, I think I've kind of made my point, though. It's just, it's just like, Gilgamesh is super, super safe. Very, very consistent, even for, like, you know, lower tier players, etc. Uh, uh, one thing I will say about a lot of Gilgamesh players that I see is they only try to kick their opponent, and they never try to kick a minion into them. And there are some matchups where, like, you definitely should try to kick... You definitely should try to kick a minion into them, especially if they have knockback immunity, or if they're, like, sitting under their tower and not pushing out very much. But uh, I'll show you guys... Trying to do the uh, Gilgamesh wall trick on him. I do play on Instacast, so it's a little bit difficult to do at times. Although not, not impossible. I'm coping a little bit, but... Oh! What? Alright, dude, never mind. Gilgamesh sucks, man. You guys saw my jump go off. Gilgamesh is terrible. Worst god in the game. It's, it's proof right there. Like, you guys should never play him. I mean, jokes aside, dude, like, that was just me being greedy, obviously. I don't think I really need to tell you guys that. You guys aren't, you guys aren't idiots. You understand that that's just me being a noob and not respecting the chalk at all. I am a little bit appreciative that that, that happened, though. Um, don't get me wrong, I didn't die on purpose. I just suck. Um, not respecting this guy whatsoever. But I am a little bit thankful that it did happen, though, because it makes this game less snowball-y and it shows you guys more of an accurate... So that way nobody can just say... Oh, well, you got ahead early, bro -hoo -hoo. you know, um, what's it called? I'm literally like 400, 500 gold up in the same level as him. Like, this is actually an even game. Like, it, it, it's an even game, so. Did he even hit me with his ult? Yeah, he did. I didn't jump the ult. Dude, that shows you right there. That should tell you right there, actually, how little I respected this matchup and didn't care. It's that there's no way his ult should, like, ever hit me unless I'm jumping in on him because he's, like, 1 HP or something. It's not that his ult should never hit me. It's just that it shouldn't hit me most of the time, I guess. All right, we're going to back for Ken's. One thing I will say about this build, I haven't, like, perfected... I ha Actually, you know what? Maybe I should just go Aussie. Would that be crazy? Would that be insane? But, um, I haven't, like, perfected the auto attack warrior build, I'll be honest. Like, maybe I should go Aussie instead earlier. Maybe I should go, uh, Toxic Blade here. I don't know. I don't need Toxic because I have Executioner. I don't know. The auto attack builds feel a little bit awkward to me in the early game. Oh, I don't have any defense, too. That's, that's part of the reason why, <laughs> why I got owned there. Um, I didn't expect to die, I should say. Nice. But um, what I was saying about the Kins is I'm well aware that the Kins proc doesn't hit that hard early. Trust me, I'm well aware. I just think it's a pretty good item in general. It scales throughout the game. 
Uh, it's not it's not really an issue to buy it early. I don't think there's a lot of uh, super, super amazing attack speed items in the early that you need to prioritize. The one thing I will say that I just really haven't been thinking about much this game because I just don't care, you know what I mean? I just don't care that much. Is um, I should have went Berserker Shield before Kins, but other than that, I would have went Kins right after it and it would have been perfectly fine. Could have went Serrated as well. Serrated is definitely a solid item, whether you're going attack speed or not. Definitely a solid item. But uh, I think once I get Berserker Shield online, there's nothing this guy can do to touch me anymore. I think between me playing it pretty poorly and between um, me not having that much defense, only having this breastplate, I think it's you know, pretty easy for him to uh, secure a kill. I'm not going to buy my second relic yet because I don't want one. I'm going to go into this. I, I want to see if he'll buy his second relic first. I want to see what he gets. Now, to be honest, I don't know if I'm waiting to like counter him specifically. I don't know yet. I don't know what I want just yet. So that's kind of like why we're waiting. I will say Scorching Blink is a little bit interesting here because generally speaking, you don't really need Blink as melee versus melee. You don't really need it that bad. Maybe if you're an assassin, maybe, but even then. Um, but the thing about Scorching Blink that is interesting in melee v melee is Scorching Blink actually um, does a lot of true damage. And when you're against a warrior that's pretty tanky and pretty pretty uh, hard to chase down and lock down like a chalk, and you know every little piece of damage counts, right? So maybe I'll go the Blink. I'm not sure yet. I definitely have a lot of options, I would say. Definitely have a lot of options. Alright, we're gonna back here. I'm gonna buy this and finish my thing. <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest. I could have just waited, but I didn't I didn't want to. <laughs> like I literally just didn't want to, and I want a little bit of extra gold to start building into my next DPS item anyways. So what I'm getting at here is it's probably the better play to just keep my breastplate and wait for gold, but I don't wanna give him even a chance of getting any pressure. And whatnot, so we're just gonna do it my way, man. Sometimes sometimes, believe it or not, I actually don't do the most efficient strategy. Um, just because I don't want to, you know? I feel like I can win either way. It's very interesting that he waited so long to ult. Also, I keep trying to do the Gilgamesh ult trick and keep messing it up. There, and if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, hopefully I can do it for you guys sometime in this video. And if I can't, maybe I'll show it in a jungle practice or something. I don't know. Um, but it's basically just doing what I just did, except not allowing him to walk for even a second. Because he had a chance to ult out of it, right? There is a way that you can pin somebody on a wall in a certain way that they can't even ult out. Like, they're literally permanently being CC'd. And if you get that on somebody, it's super, super strong. And he did not go beads, so very susceptible to it. He ended up going thorns, which is very interesting because I feel like I can play around a thorns super easy, or a thorns super super easily actually. Yeah, I would say those are that's like the two biggest things about Gilgamesh. I would say is remember that you can be pretty aggressive in the early game. Try to hit people with that ult trick the best you can. I mean, obviously, even I struggle with it a bit. And to be honest, if I put my... Oh, wait. My ult is on quick casting. Hmm. I think I did that so I could do the ult trick better, but I kind of just press my ult so fast that I don't even aim it anyways. Like, it's on quick casting, but as you guys can see, you know, rewind the video, whatever. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy, but as you guys can see, I kind of just pop it out real quick anyways. I should try to aim it a little bit better. Because it's one of those abilities that, like, you you want it to be precise. You want it to get it really, really close. Um, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's go... I can't find it. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go that serrated I was talking about. The movement speed's going to be really, really nice for me. And also, just the, the big amount of percentage pin at the beginning of the fight for my kick and stuff like that's going to be huge. And if he ever does decide to go double defense, which a lot of warriors do, it's still fine either way, but... If he does decide to go double defense, it's going to help a lot to have this much pen in my build. We should be able to kill him pretty easily late game. And even if he doesn't go with double defense, it's still fine. Especially if you consider the fact that Chalk actually, um, he's going to throw stuff over the wall, I would imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're hitting him pretty hard now. Our attack speed just gets lowered so much by his three, but no worries. Honestly, we might just go sprint. 
to chase him when he slows me because that's a big thing Chalk loves to do. See, like, I'm trying to kick things into him, catch him off guard. And don't get me wrong, it's not the easiest thing to do. You're going to miss a lot when you try to do that. But when you do hit him, it's going to be really, really beneficial, right? All right, he let that minion into tower, so I think I'm going to hit it a little bit. Dude, it's just so difficult to do what I was just trying to do because he, uh... Okay, that's an interesting ult, I will say. Because uh, his, his slow on his three is just so impactful, right? I think I can play around this pretty easily, even though like he definitely has pressure because I'm half HP, right? But I think I still have opportunities to fight this, as you can see. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over, big bro. Okay, you can't just assume that since you got somebody poked out a little bit, you're just gonna win for free. You can't just be walking in front of my tower like that. And the worst part about it is that's not even the only way he can die. Uh, I could have... What if I got the ult trick off on him? Like, what if I kicked him into the wall and perfectly CC'd him? He would have died the same exact way, right? So, once his ult is down, considering he has no beads, he's kind of just screwed if he puts himself in a bad position. And that's what I was waiting for. I was just putting myself in good positions by avoiding his rain and trying my best to avoid his poke damage and uh, calling it a day there, pretty much. Now, right now, the one thing we got to worry about is we don't want to fight him right now. We just want to get all the farm. But usually people understand that. Oh, he went double life steal. Interesting. And I already have anti-heal. One thing we got to worry about is him going to bull demon. Because a lot of people love to rush bull demon. The, <laughs> the second their tower goes down, they think it's their only play. So anyways, and you may say, Jesse, how did you know that? Are you just the most intelligent and amazing person in the world? No, it's because I play a thousand billion duel games of Split, and that's what people do. Like, people just love that play for whatever reason. They love it. They love it. Um, what do I want here? Truth be told, I think this last item could be a number of things. I think it truly could be a very many different things. I'm going to go Jotun's. And I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get this. I think this Sprout is going to help me chase him a lot, you know, because it's going to root him. It's going to give me slow immunity into his three. Very impactful stuff. The Jotuns, I don't need the Jotuns. Like I said, I think I could could have went anything here. I could have went, like, Deathbringer. I could have went Demon Blade. I could have went Boomerang. I could have went Oboe for the Titan. I could have went um, Dominance for more pen. Like, I, I could go a lot of things here. I'm just going what I want. And what I want is to have more cooldown to chase this guy down like everything i just bought is about chasing this guy down and killing him uh even the even the the glyph i purchased gives me movement speed right all right so now he's in here i'm gonna force him to ult assuming it's up again and if it and if he doesn't have his ult then he just loses the fight right and that's game <laughs> game over played like a fiddle goes how it goes um, I don't think this was really worth an upload. Um, I think I'm going to do a double one because Gilgamesh is just so impactful. I don't want you guys to think that I'm just against a lesser tier player or a lesser tier god. I'm going to give it at least one more chance to show you guys um, the, the impact that Gilga can bring in the duel scene right now. And before I actually go into it, because I know a lot of people click off after the first game or whatever, yada, yada, yada. He said easy. All right, time to be toxic. Yeah. That was pretty easy for me. <laughs> Just a little little bit of friendly toxicity, you know. Friendly friendly rudeness. What, what can I say? Uh, one thing I want to show real quick is I actually I was going to talk about it during the game, but I forgot. There was this game right here, which again, you can see more of the burst type of build, right? Um, this was against a Masters Border Chernabog, and that is a Masters slash GM level player. Um, he's pretty good. He's, no, he's a Zhang main. You guys may have seen him playing Zhang. And I utterly destroyed this guy in 12 minutes. I was going to kill his Titan in 12 minutes. And I, this was actually going to be a recording for you guys. But turns out my microphone was muted. And oh, what a waste, man. Master's Board of Chernobog getting utterly obliterated would have been perfect. But my microphone was muted the entire time. So whatever. But my point is, is I, I have played a fair amount of Gilgamesh. Uh, Gil. Gilgamesh and duel here recently and as you can see the only time I died was in this video when I tried when I was just standing there in front of him with no defense letting him hit me with all of his stuff right Gilgamesh this is not clickbait 
Very, very strong character. You guys should give him a try. Uh, you guys should even potentially think about banning him, depending on what characters you guys play, especially if they're immobile, etc. Uh, without further ado, I'll skip you guys into the next game. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, guys, we're on to the second game. And unfortunately, we're against... Oh, wait. I was going to say, well, unfortunately, we're against the King Arthur. You know, not the most competitive character in the world. But it's this guy, man. No way. No way. I love going against this guy because I can put it in the uh, I can put it in the thumbnail, which I don't know if I'll do or not do or not, but I probably will. You know, because for whatever reason, people just love that stuff. And you can call it clickbait all you want, but it's not clickbait. Like the way I see clickbaiting, and maybe you know everyone has their own impression on what it is, right? Up to you to decipher. You know, that's that's how the, that's how the world works, right? But um, the way I see clickbait is when you're lying or like at least heavily exaggerating. Me saying I went against a master's board of King Arthur with like a billion stars. Okay, maybe not a billion, right? Because that is exaggerating. But if I show you guys how many stars he has, that's not exaggerating. That's literally what happened. That's not it's not clickbait. It's just what happened, man. Here we are. Hello. I went against I think I went against this guy like twice. I think I've made one video of him before. I don't remember what god I was playing, but I think I've definitely posted this guy's stars before. Oh. Yo, that is so toxic, man. What the heck? Good thing I have 22 HP 5. Clap, clap. I think he'll out clear me. I don't know. I want to group up the minions with my jump. Hopefully he allows me to. Nice. We group up the minions by hitting him with the jump. So that's what I mean by I hope he allows me to. Is I hope he lets me hit him with it, you know? One thing I will say that is good for him about this matchup. It's just not much to say that's good for him about it. Uh, one thing I will say that's good for him is he does have uh, two dashes that are knock-up immune, I'm pretty sure. I don't know that for a fact, actually. Maybe only one of them are knock-up immune. Like, I can't kick him during them. I don't know. I'm not really a big King Arthur player, to be honest. He's never really been a character I'm all that interested in, for whatever reason. He's, like, trying to poke me a bit. We're not allowing him to get much poke off. He's getting poked, for that matter. Dude, he flicks so hard, man. I think I even talked to him about that. Like, I th like maybe not like an in-depth conversation point, but I, I definitely, I think he was in my stream or like a YouTube comment or something. I don't remember, but he ended up telling me, I mean, unless I'm confusing him for somebody else, I'm pretty sure it was him that he told me that he went against me. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're that guy, dude. You got like, like you got insane flicks because he's on controller. Like, that's the thing is, I'm pretty sure his sensitivity is super, super high. Wait, he already got that? No way. Is he staying for the wave? He is. What if he rolls in? That'd be crazy. Am I insane? He has a shell. Dude, this is dumb. This is dumb. What the heck is that? Bless Scepter? Wait, what's the stats? Oh, wait, I thought it had more HP 5. I got so excited, man. I was like, let's go. No, that, that is terrible. We're actually get, probably going to sell that thing, man. Actually terrible. Actually terrible. I feel like I'm getting a little bit low energy here. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just depressed that I'm against the King Arthur. Even though this guy is like super good clickbait. <laughs> and not clickbait, you know, like even though I'm gonna say that term a lot because it's just such a commonly used term, you know, but you guys know how I feel about clickbait. I'm just gonna sell that man. I don't I don't even care. I just don't even want to see it in my inventory anymore. I'll just take the gold. Now, technically, again, same thing with the breastplate. I could have just left it for now. It, that's the smarter play. In fact, that's what I encourage you guys to do is never do what I just did and sell it because you don't want to see it in your inventory. That's that's a very dumb tactic. But guess what, man? I'm going to I'm going to be dumb and I'm going to win this game anyways. OK, you know, whatever. I don't care. Do you guys care? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But all I'm saying is me selling that item is not going to change how this game goes. No way I'm being ulted. Yeah, dude, he's knock-up immune in that. Broken character. But he actually counters me, if you guys think about it. Maybe I should take this guy a little bit more seriously. Not because King Arthur's that good, but because he actually is pretty good at King Arthur. I, I'll give him that. But don't get me wrong, that character is nothing more than a face roll. Just smack your head on the keyboard character, but... I mean, he's pretty good at smacking his head on the keyboard. And that character does do a lot of damage. That is one thing I will say about King Arthur, is you do have to respect his player damage a bit. He just doesn't have great push and whatnot, you know? But his player damage is good. 
Especially that ult, man. His ones and his ult are insane. So is his three. Honestly, every single thing about that character, but his two is just big numbers. His two is mostly just there for the CC, right? Gonna pop our potions because bro is beating us up. No, I messed up my combo again because I, I wasn't even going to do it to be honest. I like I like second guessed myself. I was thinking about I shouldn't do it and then I chose to do it. Greetings. I think he has this big ult, so he can probably ult out. We make our he did ult out. Dude, sometimes duel is nothing more than a mind game, man. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like we couldn't have killed him if we didn't stand there AFK and then wave at him. Like, we probably could have, but, like, you don't know that for a fact, you know? You don't know how much of an impact. Like, that could have been the reason why he let his guard down and kind of just, you know, used his one on the wave instead of paying more attention to me. You never know, man. You never know. Boom. I honestly think, by the way, like at my comment about having low energy earlier, I think sometimes I just get bored recording because I've talked about this before. Like, don't get me wrong. I love recording videos for you guys. It's way more fun than streaming or not fun, but it's way more rewarding. And it makes me feel better about myself, like seeing the YouTube numbers and Twitch and like seeing your guys is really nice and uh, like either constructive criticisms or like just nice comments and stuff like I really really appreciate my YouTube audience like it, I, I don't know what am I trying to say I'm trying to say that I, I care way more about my YouTube than I do Twitch at least these days anyways I should say but it's still not as fun like the actual process of doing it like it, it's something that I have fun with afterwards um the reason why it's not as fun is just, I honestly think it's because I don't have people live reacting you know with the lol and random twitch emotes in the chat right that's pretty fun um people making jokes me making jokes with chat but also um i have music on stream i can play with music i, I blast dua lipa as, as loud as i can you know and 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 go hard and and i don't have to talk as much and i can focus more on doing flashy plays and yada 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 right whereas youtube it's like i'm talking to no one i'm talking to no one with no music in a lot of times matchups that I know it's almost impossible for me to lose whether it's because of the matchup or because of the, the player matchup or what like one way or another I know I can't lose so it's just hope you guys don't take that oh my god I actually cannot win this fight ah dude Stop it, man. That is so rude. King Arthur, I've actually noticed this a lot because I've actually went against a fair amount of King Arthur's. I think he's a pretty fair, pretty uh, popular character for whatever reason. Um, I've noticed this a lot about King Arthur where it's like he actually does stand a very good chance in the early game uh, because in generally speaking, once he gets cooldown online, as long as he doesn't die quickly, like, he needs time to get his abilities off, basically. Long story short, he needs time to use his kit. And in the early game, he has nothing but time because you can't one-shot him. You can't do a million damage very quickly, right? So, what I'm saying is, is once I get damage online, like this Kins, for example, or I mean this Xe, for example, um, uh, his bead's really the proper play here, I don't know. I'm going to buy a power pod just so I can get to that stage of the game where I can fight him a little bit faster. But um, around this mid game, he's really strong because it's like he's got his cooldown and his defense and it's hard to kill him. And he has plenty of time to get his abilities off. Once you do big damage and can burst him, he no longer has that time, right? But he he's not as safe to spam his abilities. So it's a bit of an awkward early game against King Arthur, I would say. I went for that ult there because I didn't know if he would have a way out of it, to be honest. But even if he did, I clear the wave, I get a lot of pressure, I go straight to this red buff. Clear this up, all good in the hood, no problem. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, okay. Pressuring him big here. Even though we're not getting any kills, it's not really a big deal because we get a ton of farm off of it. There's nothing he can do about it. <laughs> you guys see what I mean, though? How different those fights are? And yeah, I did play it a little bit better, but... Definitely, uh, definitely different when you actually get damage. And, you know, the XE giving me a ton of pen is huge. But also, it's, you know, my red pot, right? My red pot's coming in pretty clutch here, I would say. Pretty clutch pot, if you will. Him letting me kick him is kind of kind of bad for him, considering he has so many ways to avoid it, I feel like. I don't know if his blue dash is knock up immune or not. I know his orange one is, or red one, whichever one you want to call that. I don't know the official terms for his uh, his stances or whatever. But um, the, the red one's knock up immune, the long spin. I have no idea whether that blue one is or not. No idea. Um, You know what? We're actually going to go... I'm not going to do what I did the first game, even though I think that's perfectly viable. Like, it worked out just fine. But I'm not going to do what I did the first game. I'm going to go serrated here instead of kins, and then I'll go kins next. Did I finish my point I was trying to make about, like, having a little bit low energy today? Also, to be fair, I think it's just one of those days, to be honest. Like, I don't think it has... I don't think I should read too much into it as to, as to why. I think... I don't know, some days, like, you guys can probably relate. Some days you just have a little bit lower energy, and for no particular reason, you know? Like, you just, you just do. Just a bit of an off day. You're not, like, depressed. You're not, like, nothing seriously wrong. You just, you're just having a little bit, you know, a little bit low energy, you know? Happen, happens to the best of us, I think. Oh my god, did I do so much damage now? What the heck? As expected. Smile. Did I have red buff at the beginning of that? Because I obviously know that I don't have it now, but I, I, I do wonder if I had it at the very beginning of that. No idea. Do you guys see the potential in this character? So much HP 5, lifesteal on the 3, high mobility, high CC, high damage, high versatility. Like, you know what I mean, guys? Like, what, what doesn't this guy do? <laughs> Just kidding. Obviously, he's not perfect. One thing I will say is he doesn't have CC immunity. Although that's not that big of a deal in duel, but. My build's a little bit weird, to be honest. Like, I usually don't go XE when I go, like, Hydra serrated and stuff like that. I usually don't go XE, but. I don't know, man. Why not just try things out, test things? Maybe I'll do a, a short build summary, because, you know, I've talked about it a decent amount in this video so i don't think i'll go super in depth but maybe i'll do a short build summary at the end of this video maybe like right after i do that jungle practice test for you guys assuming i don't forget to do that uh to show you guys the old trick but to show you guys that you can build whatever you want on this character man he's very versatile again that's why i'm saying dude you guys see this damage i know you guys are seeing this damage Again, we're, we're pressing R1 for a little bit of an auto cancel. R1 does not work on the, the Phoenix. It does not work. We're just using it for a bit of an auto cancel and also because it gives us a Hydras, even though we don't have a full Hydras yet. And something I didn't mention the last time I was talking about this, but I should have, is Serrated actually gives you more power when you have abilities on cooldown. So, again, popping your one on the tower like that, it's pretty solid. No, we actually ended up healing the uh, Titan a little bit there. But uh, popping your one when you go on the... You could use all abilities before you go in if you really wanted to for full serrated. Although that's kind of dramatic. You don't really need, need to do all that. Um, so I would just say, uh, just pop your one. You know, auto one. Get a little bit of Hydra's action. A little bit of serrated action going for you. And an auto cancel all in one. Why not? If you have, like, if you have super high attack speed, like you're a full attack speed build, it doesn't matter as much because you might not even have serrated. Definitely wouldn't have Hydra's. And um, also, you have so much attack speed that the auto cancel doesn't even matter that much, you know, but. An excellent vibe. Well, see, I just had to mute right there because I had to yawn. You see, what I, you see what I mean, guys? I'm sorry. Sorry that I have low energy th today. I know you guys probably don't care that much, but I don't know what's happening to me. Like, I'm going to stream after this, and I think I'll be able to recover. You know, once that music starts playing and whatnot, I think I'll be all right. But uh, for right this moment, 
I'm just sleepy, man. I'm a sleepy guy. Maybe I didn't sleep that well. I don't know. Could have went for the old trick there, actually. Dude, I actually just one-shot this guy. That is a warrior, by the way. Don't get me wrong. It's a warrior that's three levels down. And he has way less items than me. But these are DPS items, right? Like, he has his defense item. And he is a warrior. And I'm pretty sure King Arthur has mitigations, right? Again, I'm not a big King Arthur guy. No idea, but I'm pretty sure he gets some mitigations. I don't know if it's a lot or a little, but he gets some, right? All right, so we're going to do two things here. We're going to say GG to this guy. I guess three things. Say GG to this guy. Hop into a very quick jungle practice, because I know some of you guys don't care about this stuff, or you can just envision it yourself, right? It doesn't matter to you. Whatever. But So I'm going to make this as quick as possible, and then I'm going to do a quick little build overview for you guys on different build paths that I think are correct. But again, Gilgamesh is so versatile. You can build whatever you want. You can interchange builds. You can go different types of builds. You can do whatever you want on this character. That's again, why he is the best warrior in all of Duel right now. And in my opinion, it's not that close. Like Osiris is pretty close, I guess, but other than him, and Osiris is not nearly as um, versatile, right? So here, let me quickly show you guys. You basically just kick him onto a wall and then you put this here and you do this. That's it. And I know I said I was going to make this quick and I will, but like another thing about it is it's a lot easier when you actually have like attack speed items. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was effectively CC chaining that guy there, but look at how it looks when, um, yeah, I'll go on this guy. Cause that guy's DR'd. And if you time your, maybe the attack speed actually hindered me there. Like, cause I don't know. All, I don't know if like you have to time it 100% correctly or if you can just spam auto. It probably depends on what, what ability they're going to use, etc. Right? But the point is, is you guys see the vision. There is a way to CC lock someone so hard that they can't play the game. <laughs> like they actually can't do anything, right? So Gilgamesh builds. Let's pull him up here. Gilgamesh. All right, so I go Transcendence first pretty much every single game. Uh, well, actually, let me tab out really quickly so I can um, mute the sound that Gilgamesh makes because he keeps slamming his like his sword thing in a bobber. I know it's not that's not called a sword. It's called a, a scimitar. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Whatever. But anyways, I always go transcendence. I just like the mana, like the pen, like the like the damage. Just a cool item. I will say if you really wanted to, I will quickly mention it. If you don't like to stack transcendence, you want a stronger early game. You can go dominance, whatever. It's no biggie. But I'm telling you guys what I like to build, and I am also telling you guys the, the, the different things that you can do, and dominance is fine if you want to build that first instead of transcendence, right? But for me, pretty much every single game, I love to get myself a transcendence online between how much HP 5 you have and your life steal in your 3 and your life steal on Serrated or Aussie if you if you want to go those. Um, you just have so much HP sustain. It's nice to have a million H, uh, mana sustain as well, and you're not really going to go breastplate on this character it's pretty troll so i would say the transcendence is uh, very useful and i get a lot of use out of it so i had to mute there to cough but um anyways so i would say overall uh, the most consistent build here's your other defensive option by the way and i'll just go ahead and quickly talk about this this is not a gilgamesh specific thing this is just duel in general um sometimes you want to build this magi's revenge sometimes this magi's revenge can come in super super clutch as like double defense you know if you're against like an Anubis or something and you feel like you want to you have like this long extended engagement you want to beads one wrap and then get the other one with Magi's or whatever or maybe they have a Sprout you know you can uh you can Magi's Revenge the Sprout and it allows you to cleanse the CC and chase after them uh, that's all I'll say about that after this again it's all personal preference you can go whatever you want if you're going an attack speed build you know first of all maybe you should go that dominance if you want I don't do it don't think you need it but maybe you should you know so for debate right uh, if you're going to go an attack speed build, it's probably something like boom, boom into boom. And then right here, I would say you have a lot of options. Uh, me personally, I would love to go the demon blade, especially if you need a little bit more pin. Uh, if you feel like you're against a tankier target and you need pin the demon blade, if you're against a, 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 a hunter, I mean, there's a huge argument that you shouldn't be using the auto attack build. You should be using the burst build. But if you're against a hunter, you don't need the pen as much. And maybe you just want more crit chance, right? So, boom. You could build even a boomerang right here into a death bringer. Or what if you're afraid that they're going to go spectral and you don't like that or whatever, right? Okay, so you don't go you don't go that. Um, well, let's see what we have, first of all. All right, you're going to have really, really high attack speed with this. 
especially when you get the Berserker Shield proc. So I would just say Serrated. I think Serrated is a very good item. I think you should probably build it in every single build, regardless of playstyle. The only thing I will say is it changes when you build it. Like when you're going the ability, more ability based, you probably go and burst. You probably get this serrated earlier in your build rather than later. But in an attack speed build, you can go later or you can do like something like this. Boom, boom. You know, that would work perfectly fine as well. But uh, again, like for the last item, you have so many options for your, for your um, for Gilgamesh in either build, to be honest. But you could go Aussie. You could go Oboe if you're trying to hit the Titan. You could go, um, what's it called? What was that other item I was just thinking of? Oh, it was uh, at the beginning of the thing. I remember now. Dominance last. You could get that last. That'd be perfectly fine, right? Let me see. Is there any other honorable honorable mentions I'll put in like the attack speed build specifically? Um, Toxic Blade's kind of dead because you just go Executioner Glyph. No real reason to buy that personally. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, to be honest. Like as far as the attack speed build goes, uh, I mean, there's always the Arendite for utility to chase somebody down if you want it. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it too much. Um, and then he actually, here's a good utility item. There are some matchups where you're winning so hard, like that King Arthur game, for example, I was just destroying him and I didn't need Hasten Katana, but I was winning so hard. I don't truly need anything. So maybe I just go Hasten Katana and just chase him. It gives you movement speed, gives you some, some Fatalis effect and you can, and some Hasten effect, I should say for the newer viewers and stuff. Definitely a mentionable item for sure. But again, he's such a versatile character. You can go whatever you want. You could literally go boom, boom. You could go boom, boom. You could get this and this, you could go this and this, all of these things would be fine, right? So, but really quickly, I'm going to take off all of these items because I think the, the build that's going to be more effective more often is going to be the one here. Um, and this build is going to be, oh wait, actually one thing I should mention here is if you're against something with super, super healing, like Anubis specifically, you can build Pestilence, even with the green XC on the, on the table, because personally, um, you actually, you actually probably shouldn't even go XC if you're against an Anubis. So that means if you're against an Anubis, you would want to go like boom, boom. And then, you know, boom, uh, boom, boom. It doesn't have to be in this order, by the way, it can be like this, or it can be like this, <laughs> or it can be like, you know, I only thing I would say is you probably don't want Hydra's third. It could be boom, boom, boom. If you really wanted, uh, what would I do in most cases? I would Probably go boom, 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 the way I put it the first time, right? All right, but let's stop talking about Anubis, right? Let's just talk about a general build here. So general build against most characters is, and again, you have options, guys. You have options. Don't let me dictate every single build you go. Don't don't let me give you the cookie cutter build unless that's really just truly all you care about, right? I would say a lot of the times the cookie cutter build would be third item. You either go Jotuns or Serrated. They're good for different reasons. Obviously, Serrated is going to give you more pen if they have a hard defense item. It's going to give you movement speed. It's going to give you lifesteal. The Jotuns, the main thing about it is going to be the cooldown, right? It's also cheaper, notably cheaper. But I would say more often than not, this is probably your better item here. But again, just because it's better doesn't mean that's what I build every single time. Um, I usually go Jotuns third, I would say, but it kind of depends. I don't know. I like to switch things up, you know, but I would say it's less about the order and more about the items, right? And I would say I build these items in most of my Gilgamesh games. Um, again, sometimes I just go attack speed for fun. You can't like look at my history and then call me a hypocrite or say that I'm lying about builds because what I'm trying to teach you guys is what I think to be most optimal. I don't always do what's most optimal. Sometimes I just want to have fun. Sometimes I just mess around, you know, sometimes I just do crazy stuff. But I would say this is probably your most optimal build order. Again, you go this, you go, if you are against the magical, you can go the Shoguns instead. Or the pestilence, it's up to you. But um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't build pestilence most of the time. You don't really need it. So boom, 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 and then last item again. The war you get whatever you want. Last item, man. If you need more attack speed, go more attack speed. Whether you want that to be crit, boomerang, demon blade. Whether you want it to be dominance, Aussie, executioner, double defense. You can go phalanx. Phalanx double defense, that's fine. You can do that if you want. No problem with that, depending on the matchups. You might need to go double defense certain matchups. You know, I'm not really going to put it here, but it is an option. Keep that in mind. If you feel like you're being bursted too hard and you could win the fight, if you could just survive a little bit longer and, you know, have a longer fight, as long as you're not getting bursted, you would win, then go double defense, right? So the most notable things I would say that I go most often in these games is I go oboe a lot because I usually get the Phoenix and then I just want to end the game. So I hit the Titan, you know? Um, if I need more pen, what am I, what do I have built here? If I need more pen, then I would get an executioner. So we'll, we'll slam that here. Um, 
And then a lot of times I actually like to go crit, especially with this Hydra's prong. The crit is really, really good. Uh, you can go any crit, although I will say Hydra's Deathbringer is super nasty, man. Like this, if you do get the crit with your Hydra's Deathbringer, very, very strong. I'd say these are probably like your top three items. Again, you can go other crit items if you would like. Um, right here, what do I want? What do I want to show you guys? You can go Heartseeker. Heartseeker is actually not bad. Not my preferred playstyle, I'll be honest. A little bit expensive too. Not more expensive than Deathbringer, notably. But um, Heartseeker is definitely an option for you guys. I'm just trying to give you guys options. You could go last item Kins, even though this build doesn't have that much uh, doesn't have that much attack speed. So I wouldn't really recommend it. In fact, I'm going to take it off. I'm just letting you guys know it is most certainly an option because by this point in your build, you're going to be slamming them. Uh, a lot of people love Crusher for whatever reason. They love it. They love it. They love it. Um, I don't think it's that good. I really don't. I think Heartseeker is probably better regardless of the attack speed. Um, but Crusher is definitely an option. Um, I think recommending any more items than this is probably Troll. If you're going like an ability-based build like this, actually, yeah, I am going to slam the Arendite. The Arendite can be very useful. Say you're against a Loki, uh, you're against the Morgan, you're against Al Kuang, whatever. And for whatever reason, you're bursting them, you're winning really hard, but they just keep stealthing away. Or maybe they're not stealthing. Maybe you don't need to see them in stealth with Arendite. You just need to chase them. And you don't really feel comfortable building Hasten because your build's mostly... Uh, mostly ability based, right? The Berserkers, you build it just because it's so nice, gives you HP five, gives you the a little bit of attack speed that I feel like you need, even though you're going ability based. It's just really nice to have that attack speed. Um, again, like you, you can build the uh, the Arendite last item and chase them down. Uh, very very strong. I think I lost my train of thought there a little bit, but that's okay. We'll just move on and act like nothing happened. You can go Brawlers last. I, in fact, actually, I should have mentioned this earlier. I really should have. So again, keep that in mind. I probably should have put the brawlers up sooner. If you need anti-heal and you don't really want to go XE, again, you can go XE in a in a build like this. Even if even if you don't have much attack speed, you can go XE. It's perfectly fine. Berserkers passive gives you more attack speed, and the XE is just a strong item in general, very strong. But if that's not your playstyle, you find like you're not getting that many autos off, or maybe you can get autos off, but you don't need to because you're bursting them so hard. Then get the brawlers, man. Perfectly fine item, right? And other than that, I. I think that's all I have to recommend for you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, you could go Frostbound for fun, I guess, but definitely not needed. And again, it should be obvious, but I'm just going to say it for all the Soul Eater fans out there, because I know there's a lot of you. Don't build Soul Eater. It's just bad. OK, just don't get it. It's just bad. Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the video. It does mean a lot to me. I don't know how long this one is. I think this one is actually going to be like a 40, 50 minute video or something. I don't even know. I don't know if you guys like the longer videos or not, but I, I just hope that you guys are liking the videos. I hope that you guys are enjoying the content. I hope you guys can see my passion, even though I'm a little bit tired sometimes. And sometimes I'll even admit I rush the videos a little bit, but still, please do not think that I'm not passionate about it. I care so much more about YouTube than I do Twitch. Like, uh, I see that it's growing. I see that you guys are enjoying the videos, at least like statistically enjoying the videos, like based off the stats and stuff. And I do appreciate you guys commenting all the nice things that you do. I like and read every single comment in the, uh, in the, in the videos. So thank you guys so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here for the long haul. And yes, that includes Smite 2. When Smite 2 comes out, I will be creating content, even if there's no duel, which I'm not saying there won't be duel. I'm just saying it's a potential that there's no duel. I will be creating content, whether it's conquest, whether it's 2v2, whether it's joust, you know, I don't know if there will be a 2v2. I'm just saying there's options, right? I'm here for the long haul. I appreciate you guys. Even if I stop streaming one day, which I'm not saying I will, I'm, I'm just saying, even if I stop streaming, I will continue to upload videos for you guys. Thank you guys for being here with me. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.